Hi, I'm Randall Heyman, a mathematics academic. Because of the coronavirus outbreak, I've rejigged my YouTube channel to make quick turnaround videos. If your students or your children or your grandchildren or you yourself are having trouble with any mathematics, uh, comment below or send me an email and I'll try and help you out with the video. Okay, we, I'm continuing to get some questions about abstract algebra. And someone's asked me to discuss this, any integral domain can be embedded in a quotient field. Um, and in particular, they're looking at the book by Freilich, section 21, which you don't, you don't need to have a look at to follow what I'm gonna do. But um, essentially this is about a construction, uh, construction, so how do we go, showing that we can basically always construct a quotient field from in, an integral domain. Construction, how are we gonna construct? But in a very rigorous mathematical way, we're gonna construct a quotient field from a, an integral domain. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things that Freilich says that are very relevant in the first part, the, before he actually gets to the steps that are involved. The first thing is that um, there's a lot of detail if you just follow what he's done. Now, depending on how advanced you are mathematically, um, it's not, it's not, necessarily a good idea to get too buried in all the detail. Uh, why is that? Well, if you're not very experienced, it'll be too much. And if you are very experienced, um, well, it's sort of the big picture is obvious in a lot of these things and you don't really need to get involved in the minute detail of, you know, what's the difference between this and this, um, you know, and, and stuff like that, the really nitty gritty. The second thing is that, that this whole thing about going from an integral domain to a quotient field, there is a very natural um, domain, integral domain and quotient field that we can base our, a lot of our thinking on. So this all sort of came about from trying to understand how do we go from integers to fractions or integers to uh, rationals or at, at school we might have primary school we might have said something like counting numbers or maybe positive and negative numbers or something like that to fractions so really all we're doing here is in a very formal way going through this whole process of how people came to terms with going from integers to rationals Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I, I wanna go through the four steps, but I'm gonna, rather than putting D for a domain and uh, F for a quotient field, I'm just gonna actually use the integers, uh, this symbol and this will be the rationals, which is the standard notation. And that's the way I'm gonna talk. So I'm going to talk in terms of integers and fractions, but everything I say is relevant in terms of going from any sort of integral domain and embedding it in the appropriate quotient field. Okay, so let's, uh, this video is just going to be a bit of an overview. So the first thing that we need to do is, so we know the integers and we're going to now Go back in history and we're designing this idea of fractions. And so the first thing we want to do is define what um, fractions are. What are to be. So what, what are they? Are to be. So we're going to create these things called fractions. There's a few issues that are going to come out of that some deep issues there, but we'll talk about that in a little while. 
The next thing is, remember for any of these things, whether they're integral domains or fields, we need to, it's not just the set that's involved, this is the set we're talking about, but we've also got to think about um, the two binary operations. So we better define uh, the two binary operations that we need. So normally we casually refer to them as um, addition and multiplication, even if we're not actually dealing with numbers, but we'll generally talk about it being addition and multiplication. Um, so then the next thing, having defined this, what we think is a field, we've done the set, we've done the two binary operations, we now have to satisfy ourselves that all the field axioms or rules uh, apply to the fractions. We're claiming that these fractions are a field, in fact, a quotient field, so they better, they better satisfy all the axioms or rules. So this one, just to go back to two, define the two binary operations for fractions I'm talking about here. Okay, and then the fourth thing that we we need, well, we do, which is show that the integers can be uh, viewed, oh sorry, actually it's the fractions. the uh, fractions can be viewed as including the integers. So that's a slightly confusing sort of process because it's obvious to us that the integers are in fact fractions. Okay, that's all I want to say at this point. Uh, in the next video, I'll start with number one and we'll just work our way up through it. And I'm hoping that doing it this way will give the viewers who asked me to go through this sufficient sort of understanding to be able to then process anything they need in Freilich if they actually deem it necessary then to, to actually um, to, to go through Freilich line by line. If you've got any questions about this or anything else, uh, please leave a comment below or email me.